Dearly beloved, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, welcome. We thank God for another chance. Let us pray for this moment that we are entering into. Father God in heaven, we thank you that have given us an opportunity to interact with your word again and help us as we think about these personalities in the Bible so that we may align ourselves to your will. Pray that you bless us as we dive into it. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, I thank God for ever, ever, ever being in touch with God's word. And um, we know that we are a singing people. And in the singing, the hymns that were composed have a message, have a meaning. And so I want again to, there is one stanza of the song, one of the songs in Uganda that talks about God's word that open our eyes, open our ears to see so that we can be able to see you, O oh God. And as we enter into God's word, that God opens our eyes. And this stanza simply says, O to zibule amaso, yesu tu kulabe, tu bi uli rebi gambo, bia muka mawafe, singa bade nebi wawa, ngaba malaika, nandi busei, nandi tusei, eli musayuni. Now this one simply means open our eyes to see you and we ask God to open our outer eyes to be able to read God's word and to be able to read and internalize by opening our inner eyes, our inner ears. And so friends, I thank God for this moment that we are thinking about what the Bible is telling us. And one of the things that I have picked one of these days is the personalities that are put up in the Bible that were written about. Now, we opened about Jeremiah. Jeremiah, one of the prophets, one of the major prophets in the Bible, by way of his message and by way of the weight of the message and the, the gravity, the, the whole message, the way it was. Now, there are personalities even in the gospel of, in the message of Jeremiah. And so we have talked about Jeremiah generally. We shall continue picking a few people from there. And one other person that I wanted to pick is one of the minor figures in this Bible, in this, in this book of Jeremiah. And this figure is called Baruch, the man called Baruch. And uh, Baruch surfaces in these scriptures. It's a name. And he comes up mentioned by the wordings, the words that are in the book of prophet Jeremiah. And he comes up as one of the contemporaries, as one of the friends, as one of the um, contemporaries of Jeremiah. He was a scribe. The Bible talks about him as a secretary. He was one of the courageous leaders in this, in this book of Jeremiah. Now, he sounds minor. He sounds as one of those that was in the redemptive plan of God. He is mentioned in here. And, you know, being mentioned in the book, in the Bible, is an honorable thing. We have read about people that have been mentioned in the Bible, whether they did good or whether they did bad. But the mention of their names, you see, there is a record that was left behind. And so, just like I talked about Jeremiah being known by his name in the Bible, and there's something that he did, that actually there's a record that is left. Baruch also has something that is left behind for us. And so, he kept showing up in Jeremiah's message and um, he kept showing up as one of the friends of Jeremiah. He kept showing up as one of the close associates in the book of Jeremiah. And so I just desire that we read a few verses that spell out this man because uh, this will give us the basis for our interaction about him, a few things that we shall be picking from him. And just like I've said, we read about them. We talk about them. You know, we think about them. These personalities because we also desire that there will be something that will be left behind for the future generations. When we are referred to, when 
like we refer to baruch what did he do that can actually add value to our life when you talk about jeremiah what did he do that can add value to our life and very many other figures that we have here in the bible now let me open with you the book of jeremiah chapter 32 verse 12 there's a mention of this man here and um, jeremiah had been told to do something acted something buying a, a piece of land and things like that and so in verse 12 of, the bible says after sealing the after writing the covenant after writing the deed in verse 12 it says and i gave the deed of purchase to baruch the son of neriah son of masaya in the presence of hananel my cousin in the presence of the witnesses who signed the deed of purchase and in the presence of all the Judeans who were sitting in the court of the guard, I charged Baruch in, the, in their presence, saying, That says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, take these deeds, both this sealed deed of purchase and this open deed, and put them in an earthware vessel that they may last for a long time. Now you may read on, there's something that, that is. Uh, this man Baruch is charged with here. He surfaces as one of the confidants of Jeremiah. A land deed, sealed and signed properly and handed over to Baruch. Now, something that I gather about this man, he must have been an elite. He must have been an educated man, a good writer, a good record keeper. And as we pick from here, it is something that actually, as people who are living in this generation where there are troubles about lost documents, about many, many things that happen. Now, here is a guide. And the way they would keep the documents is saying, keep it securely. And that's where that actually we would, I mean, it would last for a long time. And remember that actually, even us during our time, how do we keep our documents? How do we set them securely? And so this man, Baruch, by mere mention by Jeremiah here, handing over the documents to him, signed the deed, that actually they, can, they may be kept securely. And so this man is mentioned here in, in the, uh, Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 12. And then let us read about him again in Jeremiah chapter 36. 36 verse 4 following following and here we read about him again and says then jeremiah called baruch the son of neriah and baruch wrote a scroll at the dictation of jeremiah all the words of the lord that he had spoken to him jeremiah seated wherever he was and this man baruch writes whatever method they were using whether it was on papyrus, whether using whatever pens that they were using. Of course, the scribes, actually, technology had started setting in of writing. And the Bible is saying that he wrote what Jeremiah dictated to him. And verse 5, he says, chapter 36, verse 5 says, And Jeremiah ordered Baruch, saying, I am banned from going to the house of the Lord. So you are to go. And on the day of fasting, the hearing of all the people in the Lord's house, you shall read the words of the Lord from the scroll that you have written at my dictation. You shall read them also in the hearing of all the men of Judah who come out of their cities. Pray the Lord. There actually there's something that actually is being indicated here. Public reading of scripture in the place of worship. And now some people may ask, how did it begin? How did the, writing, the reading of scriptures in the public at a raised platform begin? Remember, we have talked about Ezra, the scribe. One of the episodes a long time ago, we talked about Ezra, the scribe, Nehemiah, the, the governor. And now this is how the public reading of scripture started. And Jeremiah is ordering Baruch, him being banned, stopped from going to the place of worship. And so he says, go. Now you are the one to go because I've dictated what God has said to me and you have written down. Go and read it to the people. 
And so we thank God that actually something is, is derived from here for our use for the current times. That even when we read, for our first reading is from the book of Jeremiah chapter 5. We're just doing exactly what um, was ordered long time by this. Um, because it was a nice thing to do. The people had to hear what God is saying. And so Baruch stands out and you read more about him, chapter 45. There's something that is spoken about him there. And this is very, very critical for our edification as the man. So something that we pick uh, from this man, I realized that this man was picked upon as one of the key leaders in the society because he remained faithful to the Lord as an official. Because actually you could not just stand and begin reading if you're not an official of recognized background. If you were nothing. And so Jeremiah must have tapped into his, you know, his background, his reputation, his leadership, his eliteness. He had must have been an educated man, could be a professor of sorts and things like that. And so this teaches me that actually this man remaining faithful to the Lord as an official, who was a secretary, a writer, a scribe, he remained faithful to Jeremiah. Now, what does it mean to us people who listen today? You and I, can we pick some leaf from Baruch, the writer, Baruch, the scribe, Baruch, an official? Do we have people in our society, we who are church people, church leaders? Do we have people in our society who are officials, but they are faithful to the word, they are faithful to the message? And so it's an appeal that comes very openly to the elites, to the people of recognition, to the people of power, to the officials at whatever level that we need the Baruchs in our society that will stand with us, that will stand with the church like Baruch did with Jeremiah. He remained faithful, praise the Lord, pray the Lord and pray the Lord that he remained faithful even as an official uh, of his standing. So we pray to God to raise up people like this. Could be ourselves as well because he remained faithful. Are we faithful to the word? Are we faithful to the message? Are we faithful to the work that God has handed over to us during our time? Now, one other thing, friends, reading about Baruch, not very, very, you know, there are not many, many chapters dedicated to him in the book of Jeremiah, but this is what I gather, that he shows up as a discerning man. Discerning is wisdom. And he remained an associate to Jeremiah and God must have opened something in his mind, wisdom coming. So even when there was time of falsehoods, difficult moments to believe Jeremiah's message. You remember, we have already talked about Jeremiah as a weeping prophet. He wept because there were many things that were not going right. But in the difficult times like that, in agonizing times like those, Baruch remained an associate and it was him who stood out together with Jeremiah and uh, Jeremiah, he sent the message to the people that were intended to receive it. He associated with him. Baruch associated with Jeremiah. Praise the Lord. And this shows me as a Bible reader, even you as a Bible reader, you recall there were people who were sacred friends who came even during much, much later times of Jesus Christ. There were people who were officials, but on the background, but supporters of the word. Have you ever read about the man called Nicodemus in John chapter 3? The man that the Bible talks about and comes to Jesus at night. And the people have, there's been a debate centuries and centuries, thousands of years from the time it was, it is, it was propagated that the man came to Jesus at night. And after him asking his questions, the Bible said actually, goes silent about him. I've just mentioned the Nicodemus. And how about the other one who helped Barrio over the Lord Jesus Christ? And um, these, these people 
we are silent we are silent friends i mean propagators of the gospel joseph of alimathea is the one that i'm talking about pray the lord now baruch believed and he associated with jeremiah do we have can we have do we have people like this that actually are supporters of ministry even when they are not publicly known baruch leaves a message for us and even this new new testament biblical figures nicodemus joseph of arimathea and several others that didn't come out very openly but they were very very supportive they were not noise makers but they're very very supportive they were not masqueraders but they're very very supportive so praise the lord that actually we have baruch who supported the ministry of jeremiah now friends this made me to recall in the book of proverbs chapter 17 verse 17 it talks about a friend that sticks more than a brother in the proverbs chapter 18 verse 24 a friend that sticks more than a brother pray the lord that actually we have people that can stick closer to our hearts closer to us in support of the ministry in support of our personal needs and so a friend who sticks closer than a friend i've said the proverbs 17 17 Proverbs 17, 18, Proverbs 18, 24. These testify to the fact that a friend is a friend. And of course, again, there's a popular saying that a friend in need is a friend indeed. Because Jeremiah, difficult times, hard times, but Baruch stuck with him, dictated the words, he wrote them down. He went and read and, and read them before the public. And so praise the Lord that actually we pick a lesson from there. Now, this man, a scribe, Baruch, a secretary, gave the like, legitimacy to Jeremiah's works. He made Jeremiah's works credible. You know, we associate with the people of, of a certain caliber, high standing in society, for credibility, their name gives us you know someone says i am i'm coming from the office of the president i'm coming from the office of the rdc i'm coming from the oh, i'm coming from the office of the manager now you see that uplifts you you're standing when you are associated with people of high standing in the society now credibility in the ministry is actually important and people can give hearing that oh he's a big man oh She's a big lady. And yes, not just being big, but has a message. Has a message because of your standing in the society. So Baruch gave great credibility to the ministry of um, Jeremiah. He recorded everything that Jeremiah said. And um, we have talked about the buying of the field in, in Jeremiah chapter 32, verses 11, following, following. And uh, keeping legal documents well. We have talked about keeping documents well. And we must learn how to keep documents well. It's a huge lesson there. Keeping records. Now, even keeping records alone is a message of hope. Praise the Lord. Did you know that keeping a record is a message of hope? Why are you keeping the record? Because you are keeping, because you are looking to the future. Keeping a record is for purposes of the future. Future reference, future use. And so the reason why you go and seal them sealing them and properly keeping them whether you are there or not there maybe the future generations your children whoever are they land documents are they houses documents do you have files that you have kept them so actually even during this time of masqueraders of robbing of stealing people's now these documents can be of help later on so this man baruch giving legitimacy giving credibility to the message and keeping the records for purposes of the future now records are for the future and um because actually in chapter um, 32 there is somewhere uh, in verse 17 talks about to uh, for the future reference uh, 32 verse 17 and uh, there is something that he mentioned is there and oh lord it is you who have made um the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm nothing too hard for you but there is in verse um, verse 15 is what i mean verse 15 is that for that says the lord god of hosts the god of israel houses and fields and vineyards shall again shall again be bought in this land shall again referring to the future so friends 
future is good look at it but do something today for tomorrow do something today for tomorrow do something today for next year do something today for the generations to come pray the lord actually baruch gives us this huge lesson now one other thing that actually i find that i gather from baruch is that he wrote jeremiah's prophecies putting his life in danger remember that actually jeremiah had told him that actually for me i've been I'm banned from the public you go but remember in chapter 36 verses 4 baruch was also committed <laughs> was, was also arrested after he read to the king Jehoiakim in verse 26 of chapter 36 Baruch was seized was arrested and the scrolls were burned can you imagine scrolls were burned but the man remained faithful remained over there spreading and reading what Jeremiah had told him and so friends committing yourself to be a friend to somebody a closer sticking more than a brother it's not only good times but even hard times it's not only receiving you know rewards of niceness but there can be rewards of bitterness like you know agonies and suffering things like that so this man we have friends that are like this man standing with us but now which kind of friends do you have do they run away do they but pray the Lord, actually, this man, even when he was arrested, he never denounced Jeremiah as his friend. And um, he was before the king, and things were not well, but he was... And I like the drama that ensued in chapter 36. And um, verses 26, let's see a few verses there. And the king, Nebuchadnezzar, the king commanded Jeremiah, the king's son, and Sariah, the son of Aziel, and Sheremiah, the son of Abdil, to seize, to grab, to arrest Baruch, the secretary, and Jeremiah, and Jeremiah, the prophet. But the Lord hid them. Pray the Lord. Try to seize them. Now, verse 27. Now, after the king had burned the scroll with the words that Baruch wrote at Jeremiah's dictation, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah and said, Take another scroll and write on, on it all the words, all the former words that were on the first scroll, which Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, has banned. Pray the Lord. Write again. Write again. Write again. Now, I've written here in my book that actually never give up. Is it an attempt to something that you are doing? Never give up. Try again. Try again. Try again. Pray the Lord. Try again. So, friends, this is something that I thought that can add value. When the Lord has given a word, when something has been, you have given a first attempt, has not yielded. Baruch wrote, things were burned. They were seized. They were arrested. Jeremiah thrown. Jeremiah, you know, many, many things happening to them. But God said, write again, the former words. So my dear friends, this is encouraging me. Is it a godly cause? Is it a godly cause? A godly something that you are doing? Never give up. One attempt might be thwarted, might be thrown out. The first attempt might but never give up because this is what god is telling us in jeremiah chapter 36 verses verse 27 going down 28 take another scroll they have banned this one write another one they have destroyed this one write another one so friends this time that um god has called us to live at our generation this world is doomed to destruction we should simply be faithful to God and what he wants. Just simply, be faithful to God and what he wants. Let us rejoice in the fact that we shall escape destruction. Now, God hiding Baruch for a while and Jeremiah, and even when they were in trouble, God covered them with his mercies. So remain faithful. Remain faithful like Baruch remained faithful to Jeremiah. 
And if you have political access, support the work of the church because Baruch had political access to the king. If you have some access to some bigger offices, continue being supportive to the church. Pray the Lord. Continue being supportive to the word of God, to the word, to the work. Back in your villages, back in your families, may God enable us to pick something from Baruch, the secretary, Baruch, the scribe, who stuck closely to Jeremiah. And we pick great credible things from him and never forget keeping the records. Because secretaries keep records. Our church, the church records must be kept. Pray the Lord. Family records must be kept. Personal records must be kept for future reference. Whether we are there or not there, may God enable us to look towards the future. And may he bless us as we think about what Baruch did and Jeremiah at war and at large. May God keep you. May God keep watching over you and me too. And so that we shall see another day in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <music>